Hey friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. I'm spending some time this week with the 2016 Lincoln MKX, all new midsize luxury crossover from Ford's luxury brand. It's got a lot of new features, new styling, and some class exclusive features that Lincoln really hopes will make it stand out in the market. And it's got pricing that really puts it up against BMW, Mercedes, and even Lexus. So my question is, does it stack up? The all-new Lincoln MKX is built upon the same midsize chassis as the popular Ford Edge, both of them built at Ford's Oakville, Ontario, Canada assembly plant. For this generation MKX, however, it features its own unique design that shares not a single piece of sheet metal or trim with the Ford. At first blush, it's a very appealing design, I think. The lines and curves here tell a nice story, giving a strong shoulder line from the front to the rear three-quarter view. There, LED tail lamps tie together across the rear deck with chrome trims that give it a nice planted stance. Optioned here is the technology package that brings adaptive LED headlamps that frame out one of the best versions of Lincoln's dual wing front grille design to date, though this theme will be replaced in a couple of years with the new face of Lincoln seen on the 2017 Continental and the MKZ. So if you like this face, you want to get one in the next year or so. Our tester here is near fully loaded with a reserve package in a pearlescent color they call white platinum. It has 20 inch wheels that while large don't look oversized here at all. They tie nicely into lower black cladding and a chrome rocker trim that's expected of a crossover, but more elegant here than many. Moving inside, the interior of our MKX was near fully outfitted with cappuccino premium leather seating, genuine open pore wood trims, and most every comfort and convenience option on the list. It was light and airy in this color scheme, especially with the wide open panoramic glass roof. Design of the dash is unique to the MKX, but not far removed from the Ford Edge, sharing much of its Ford-borne switchgear and hardware. It does have a unique push-button shift selector, which frees up room on the center console for a closable phone and device bin. There's lots of storage here too, with two shelf spots in the center console down below the center stack, and of course the console also offers a large bin under the armrest in addition to a power opening glove box up front. This has the 22-way adjustable driver's seat. It's a $1,500 option, pretty spendy, but if you're gonna have it, you need to know that there's several ways to adjust this, and it actually takes a little bit of time to get it dialed in. Now, this has controls down here on the side where you'd expect them, but because this goes 22 ways, you can't possibly do everything here. Up here on the screen, there's also a place that you can take and do a few more adjustments. Now, you have to flip through a menu or two to get to this point because we are talking about a My4 Touch system, which is several menu layers deep. But once you're here, you can actually adjust all the different metrics of the seat here, and it shows you on a diagram of the seat what you're actually doing. And I can actually feel a lot of these adjustments sort of creeping in on my back here. It's kind of a fun toy to play with. Now, another fun toy to play with is the massage feature. Right here, you can come in here and set this to auto massage your back, both the lower and the seat cushion. And it feels kind of good, I have to admit. And of course, the passenger also has this very nice feature. Now, if I'm driving, I'm not sure, I have not really tried driving, but sitting here, I kind of like it. Ahead of the driver in the MKX is a unique steering wheel with leather and wood trim that frames a TFT screen instrument cluster, also unique to the MKX. It has two dials that light up with digitally generated and customizable displays. I like it. As you can see, sitting back here in the back seat, there's plenty of space. I'm about 5'9", and I'm plenty comfortable as it relates to space. I'm not crowded. Plenty of headroom, plenty of legroom up here, and these seats here, they're not all the way forward or back. They're just right there in the middle. There are some adjustments here, primarily the seat back rake. You can adjust that. It. It's actually got a pretty good amount of range. What there isn't is a sliding adjustment for an aft. Not a big thing, but a lot of vehicles in this class are getting that now. Amenities back here include things like HVAC vents. There are seat heaters on this particular model and power ports, both a 110 outlet and a 12 volt outlet, but no USB ports, something that again, a lot of competitors in this class are starting to get. So you can charge a device or in some cases also connect to the infotainment system. Of note, our MKX was optioned with a second row inflatable seat belts that can help reduce injury in a crash. That's why they look a little bit bulkier. 
Moving on to the cargo capacity, the rear seats fold down in a 60-40 split rather easily with a push of a button located just inside the driver's side of the cargo area. The floor is near flat and lined with very high quality materials. Under that floor was an optioned cargo utility package that lines and organizes the open space under the deck pretty nicely for keeping smaller things hidden away. And under that is a temporary spare tire, which is nice in a class where inflators and a can of fix a flat are becoming the norm. In all, the interior of the MKX I think is pretty well done. It's clear Lincoln tried to make sure it was a step up from the Ford Edge, and there I think they've definitely succeeded, earning it a score of 5 of 5 stars. The infotainment system, on the other hand, is another story. Our testers still had the old-school My4Touch interface, which has never been easy to use while driving or even when stopped. It's slow to react, its menus are complex, and its graphics are hard to see in the daylight. Audio from its very pricey Rebel sound system was good, but nothing close to the Lexus Mark Levinson top-end systems, which ironically most often cost less. Other technologies here included the driver assistance package, which has adaptive cruise control, active emergency braking, and lane keeping assist. The driver assistance features worked well and helped scoring the technologies here at 3 of 5 stars. I will note, however, that SYNC 3 equipped models are much better in this area and would have scored easily much higher. Under the hood of our MKX is the optional of its two engines. With 32 more horsepower than the standard 3.7 liter V6, the 2.7 liter twin turbocharged EcoBoost engine has 335 horsepower and 380 pound-feet of torque. It comes standard with all-wheel drive and a six-speed automatic transmission with steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. The EPA rates it here at 17 MPG city, 24 MPG highway, and 19 MPG combined. Woo! Holy mackerel. Man, this thing's got a little bit of punch. Now I'm speeding. Let me slow down a little bit. So power's good. Power's very good with this engine and turbo lag, not really an issue. The other thing I'm impressed with is this transmission it actually does a very good job of delivering downshifts when you really put your foot in it. It doesn't delay, it doesn't hunt around, it just does it. And that's always a good thing. The only thing that I'd really note about this powertrain is this engine is a little bit on the noisy side, I think. It's the same engine you're going to find in F-150, you're going to find it in a Ford Edge. It just sounds like the same engine that's in those vehicles, which is fine, but we're at $63,000 here, and in that price range, you're comparing against things like Lexus, you're comparing against BMW, Lexus. Lexus, and I say that three times because they are very refined in their engines. Mercedes-Benz as well. That's one area where I think this engine doesn't quite compete at the level that they do. And if there is only one other downside, it's the fact that fuel economy, this really isn't the kind of EcoBoost engine that delivers the fuel economy like one of the small four cylinders. This is really all about horsepower, and so this week, I've hit about 19 mpg, which is exactly what's promised by the window sticker, but it's not really class leading. When it comes to the powertrain, I recommend anyone drive both engines to see which suits them best. The additional power from the EcoBoost isn't dramatically more than the standard engine, and fuel economy is virtually identical. Here with this engine, though, the powertrain scores at 4 or 5 stars. When it comes to the ride and handling experience here, I'm finding it very similar to the Ford Edge that I just test drove earlier this year. That's not a slam. Ford Edge actually drives quite well, but it's very similar. Now there is one thing that separates this from the Ford Edge, and that is this has the Lincoln Drive Control Suspension. That means this has three different settings, Comfort, Normal, and Sport. Comfort. Well, that's the roly-poly waterbed ride, the floaty boat ride that you would compare to a 1970s era town car. There must be some people out there that still want that because Lincoln still gives it to them. Then there's normal, which is somewhere in between comfort and sport. Usually when I have a car with adjustable suspension, I almost always put it on sport because I prefer a stiff, firm ride that has tight handling. It's just... I grew up driving race cars, it's my preference. But oddly enough, on this one, the sport setting to me is actually harsh. They've actually tuned the suspension such that it's actually too much on this vehicle, I think. If we're a sport coupe or some kind of a performance car, that'd be different. But for a luxury SUV, it actually becomes harsh. It makes 
things rattle in here. It makes things squeak. It really sort of detracts from the overall driving experience. So I've left it on normal, even though even the normal has a little bit more of a floating sensation than I prefer. In the end though, it still has a relatively quiet ride, although there is a little bit more road noise here than I would expect. Out here in the neighborhood, it's pretty quiet. It's only when you get on the highway that might have noisy pavement do you really get a lot of road noise that, to me, just isn't in keeping with a vehicle in this price range. All of these driving impressions bring me to scoring the chassis at four or five stars. While this is a decent showing, there are still some levels of noise and harshness that I think Lincoln could polish up. And that brings us to overall quality feel. Compared to the Ford Edge I tested recently, which is built on the same assembly line, the MKX was much better in terms of exterior body fit and panel alignment. The interior too was better put together and had much higher quality finishes. There were still some intermittent rattles and squeaks inside, however, coming from the dash and the headliner, especially with the suspension tuned to sport mode. Overall, though, it earns a quality feel score at four or five stars. Well, folks, rounding it up for the Lincoln MKX, let's have a look at the specs. Now, as you can see right here, pricing on this one, $63,000 and some change. That's pretty spendy, in my opinion, when you consider the fact it starts at $38,000, roughly, We've got so many options on this, and the funny thing is, we're not even at the top here. You can get the black label, you can spend quite a bit more money on this. The thing is, when I see this price tag, I start thinking things like BMW, Mercedes-Benz. That's the same money we're talking about here, and to be quite honest with you, while this is much improved over previous Lincolns, it just really isn't to the levels of refinement and overall finesse that those brands bring. And so when I look at value here, I put that at three stars. When you put that in with everything else we've already talked about, we're at four stars for the week. It's a soft four stars. Four stars it is. I'm Sam Haymar for Test Driven TV. I hope you enjoyed the ride. Now that we've got the test drive out of the way, it's time for a little bit of commentary. When you think of Lincoln, do you think of a competitor to Mercedes-Benz, to BMW, to Lexus? Or do you think of a very nice Ford, a Ford with a lot of stuff on it? Well, to be honest with you, the latter is what I think. I think of Ford with a lot of extra stuff and an extra 10 to 20 grand. That's exactly how I see this vehicle. It's how it feels, it's how it drives, and that really makes it hard for me to really see value in it. It's not like Lexus where they've really gone to great lengths to separate the brand, separate the vehicles, the product from the Toyota brand of which it's based. When you get into a Lexus, you don't see Toyota. You don't see Toyota switches. You don't see a Toyota radio. You don't see Toyota trim. It's a completely different car. And in most cases, they actually have different platform architectures, they've got different powertrains. Even though they're closely related, they don't drive the same and they don't feel the same. And I guess you could also say the same for Cadillac. They've actually gone to great lengths to also separate themselves from the rest of the General Motors bunch. And that is to say, when you get into a Cadillac these days, it's very difficult to look and see switches or trim that you'd also find in a Chevrolet, or a Buick for that matter. So what's my point? My point is, Lincoln wants to be a luxury brand. They don't want to be considered a Ford with a lot of stuff. And I get that, but they need to really step it up. This is a nice car. It really shows that they're headed in the right direction, but they're not there yet. They still have a ways to go if they really truly want to be taken seriously as a luxury brand that's a standalone brand. Food for thought. Anyway, if you like the test drive you just saw, click on the link right here. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We test drive one, sometimes two vehicles every week. Plus, we have a new video almost every single day. There's always something new. So stay tuned.